we, like everyone else, have kind of followed the, the guidance as it has evolved. And for a brief period of time, we uh, were, you know, we were talking about, do we remove the social distancing rules? Um, you know, the guidance was you can uh, gather with unvaccinated people. So we allowed our staff to gather in break rooms without masks so they could actually share a meal together, which we had not allowed uh, for over a year. And now that's changing again. We're following the guidance with, with the prevalence of Delta and the ab ability to spread uh, between vaccinated people. We're once again back to requiring social distancing, limiting the number of people in a break room. Um, we've always had full masking at all times in all uh, uh, clinical care areas. Um, that I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, but uh, you know, we're, we're sort of back to where we were months ago, um, sort of before things were loosened up. Uh, in terms of in-house capacity and census, it's relatively low, but going in the wrong direction. So we had a period uh, several weeks back where we were down to one patient. We never got to zero, um, but there were several days with only a single COVID patient in-house, none in the ICU. Um, and that was, you know, that was worthy of celebrating in and of itself. But uh, then we had two, then we had three, now we're up to about 10. Uh, so, you know, numbers nowhere near where they were at their peak um, when we had 200 patients in house with COVID. Um, so still small, um, few in the ICU. I think we have one in the ICU right now, not on a ventilator. Um, so we're, we're certainly not anywhere near our, our various peaks, but it's going in the wrong direction. And every day we talk about it, we mention on our safety huddle every morning what our COVID census is, and it's slowly creeping up. Um, so we're, we're seeing more patients come through the ER. Um, you know, percentage of those get admitted. Interestingly, we are seeing um, more pediatric cases. Uh, not, you know, you read about it in the news, you, you definitely hear about the, the number of uh, sort of younger cases trending up. And that's interesting to look at. You don't really know whether that's because, I don't think there's anything different about Delta in terms of in, in impacting younger people more. I just think if you look at the spread of who's vaccinated, you know, those who are sort of 50, 60, 70 and up have a very, very high rate of vaccination at this point. The unvaccinated groups tend to skew younger. And so I think it's just a numbers game. You know, like if you if you have cases going up and there's a chunk of people that aren't really in that pool, of course, it's going to skew, skew younger. So um, I, I think we'll continue to see more infections in that younger group. And unfortunately, some of those are, are not going to do well. Like I said, right, it's a it's a it's a numbers game. Most people do fine, some do not. Increase the overall pool of those who are potentially you know, eligible to not do well, and you're gonna have more people not doing well. So uh, I think we're, we're starting to see some of that. We, we do see some um, um, otherwise young, healthy people, 20s, 30s, uh, not doing well. Again, our numbers are small. We don't have any of those cases at the moment, um, but certainly seeing that. No, no capacity issues in the Northeast, in the New Jersey area, in particular among the hospitals. Um, New York, New Jersey actually have pretty high vaccination rates overall. Um, you know, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, um, we're among the highest in terms of two dose or, or full vaccination, uh, either single J and J or, or two of the others. And so, you know, we're not seeing the same kind of numbers some of the areas with low vaccination rates are, but still 60% is not where we wanna be. And you look at Jersey City, there are definitely people who are not vaccinated. Um, and so they're at risk and, and those around them are at risk. So we're, we're really trying to make that outreach uh, in every way that we can. You know, when we met in February, we talked about trying to do outreach and we're still talking about it. It's, it's been challenging. There really are um, groups with some, some deeply ingrained fears. Um, and you know, it's my job to try to connect and, and understand those fears and, and help people get over them. Um, you mentioned what are we sort of doing differently. Our whole health system, uh, at Jersey City Medical Center and the RWJ Barnabas system has mandated vaccination for every employee of uh, the health system. So EBS, security, clerks, cashiers, physicians, you name it, um, everybody must be vaccinated. Uh, and so we're in the process of working through that now. Um, there, there are those who have hesitations and I'm doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations, counseling, trying to help people, uh, again, have that conversation, understand where the fear is and try to, to combat that fear with facts. Um, so that's where we are. We're, uh, you know, proud to kind of be a leader in that. I think it's um, it's a challenge, right? There are certainly those who, who do not want to be vaccinated, but if you're going to work uh, at our system and you're going to work at Jersey City Medical Center, we think it's important that uh, we kind of take a stand on that, and, and that's that's where we are.